Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the weekly educational series. Today I'm going to be talking about muscle damage, a topic that is highly talked about within the fitness industry. I'm going to be covering what muscle damage really is, whether we need to cause damage to see muscle growth, and I'm also going to be discussing some programming implications. Now to begin, we can generally classify muscle damage into two different types. The first type being micro level damage and the second type being macro level damage. In the context of resistance training, we are primarily concerned about micro level damage, which is disruption to contractile protein homeostasis. So there is damage occurring to the contractile proteins that make up the myofibrils. Now when I say contractile proteins, I'm referring to sarcomeres, okay, which are made up of actin and myosin filaments. Actin filaments being the thin filaments, and myosin filaments being the thick filaments, which grab onto the actin and pull them in to cause a contraction. Now, during resistance training, we are completing concentric and eccentric contractions, which both have the potential to cause micro-level damage to the structure of the sarcomeres. Now, we do see much greater damage occurring with eccentric contractions, and this is primarily due to the fact that eccentric contractions lengthen the sarcomeres, and this is what causes additional damage, and what generally leads to DOMS, okay, so delayed onset muscle soreness. Okay, when people report they are feeling DOMS, that is due to the fact that their sarcomeres have experienced micro-level damage. When damage occurs, your body exhibits a systemic or a local inflammatory response depending on the severity of the damage to the sarcomeres. Now, this inflammatory response aids in the repair process, but it also results in a decrease in muscle performance, which can last up to several days, again depending on the severity of the damage that has been induced. And we also have macro level damage, which refers to uh, larger tears in muscle tissue, which can result in prolonged injury. Something that we should uh, stay away from if we are training in a smart and strategic manner. So a lot of people are under the impression that for muscle growth to occur, there must first be damage and then repair of the muscle fibers. Although this is partly true, and it does occur to some degree, it has been well established that protein turnover is what ultimately determines whether a muscle grows in size or not. Now, if you don't know what protein turnover is, I urge you to do some research on that topic. But briefly, the mechanical stress that is applied onto the components of the muscle fibers during resistance training activates signaling proteins like mTOR and insulin-like growth factor and these proteins activate gene transcription and increase muscle protein synthesis in excess of muscle protein breakdown. Okay, so resistance training, uh, the mechanical tension that resistance training induces itself is enough to result in a positive protein turnover. Okay, so muscle growth itself is a biological adaptation to increased stress and increased workload on the components of the muscle uh, fibers. Okay, it is not an adaptation to muscle damage. Now, along with protein turnover, satellite cell uh, proliferation can also aid in muscle hypertrophy. Satellite cells are cells that just aid in the repair process, okay, so they help repair damage to the, to the muscle fibers and I will be going uh, over this later as well. Okay, but the main two factors that will result in muscle hypertrophy is one, uh, protein turnover, and two, satellite cell uh, proliferation and differentiation into the, the muscle fibers. So muscle damage tends to occur when the muscle fibers experience a stimulus that they are unaccustomed to. So maybe a new exercise, different rep ranges, different loading zones, Okay, generally, when you start a new training phase, you will have uh, different exercises um, that you may be unaccustomed to, and this generally leads to muscle damage as well. And we see that on this graph here. Okay, so if you think of this triangle there as the unaccustomed stimulus, 
So it could be the start of a new program. Muscle damage tends to go up, okay? And if we see time across that uh, axis there, over time it drops if you keep uh, repeating that same stimulus. And this is because of the repeated bout effect. So the more times you perform a certain movement or a certain exercise, the less damaging it gets, okay? So let's say we start a new program here. For the first few weeks, we experience um, quite a large degree of muscle damage, okay? And, you know, after the second and third week, muscle damage tends to drop and then flatten out, okay? And again, this occurs due to the repeated bout effect. Now, I'll be coming back to this later and talking about some programming implications. Now, there are pros and cons to the repeated bout effect. If we look at it on a large scale, the more training you do and longer you train for, the harder it gets to build muscle. Okay, as you advance through your training career, it is no longer as easy as it was when you first started to build muscle. We all know that. This is partly due to the repeated bout effect. Okay, and down the track, as you advance throughout your career, you may have to ensure your muscle fibers uh, are experiencing an unaccustomed stimulus, okay, possibly more frequently um, than if you are at the beginning of your training career, so a beginner or an intermediate. Now, the pro to the repeated bout effect is that over time, as I said, certain exercises, certain stimuli get less damaging. Consistently inducing high amounts of muscle damage during resistance training may not be very beneficial for maximal hypertrophy. And this is because when you damage contractile proteins, your body must first repair those damaged proteins before it can spend energy and protein on synthesizing new uh, proteins to create a bigger muscle fiber. Okay, and if we look at an example here, let's say that we induced uh, eight units of muscle damage. Okay, now these are all going to be arbitrary terms, okay, but I think it will make a good example. So with eight units of muscle damage, which is quite high, we may get one unit of hypertrophy. Okay, so this area here. Now, reason being is because, as I said before, your body has to bias all its adaptive resources to the repair process since you've damaged so many, so many, so many contractile proteins. Okay, and it only has uh, limited resources left to induce hypertrophy. Okay, if you are a novice trainee, okay, so a beginner, you may get two um, units of hypertrophy. Okay, so you may see additional hypertrophy there. And this is due to the fact that when you are a beginner, your body is pulling energy even from uh, fat. Okay, so it's pulling energy from everywhere to fuel the process of muscle growth. Now, let's say you only induced six units of damage, okay? So less muscle damage there. All of a sudden, your body has more energy and again, more adaptive resources left over to induce hypertrophy, which means you may get two units of hypertrophy here, maybe even three, okay? Um, now, we have to remember that these six units of damage still came with, you know, progressive overload, sufficient mechanical stress on the muscle, okay? That, is, that may lead to two units of hypertrophy. If you were a beginner, again, you may get an extra one, one. So you may get three all up. Now, as you can see there, in this example, it is desirable, okay, if you want maximal hypertrophy to be limiting the amount of muscle damage that you induce. Okay, because you will most likely get more hypertrophy if you induce less damage. Now, I'm not saying that this type of training here doesn't work because people clearly still make progress uh, with this type of training. A lot of pro bodybuilders uh, complete very damaging bouts of resistance training and they obviously have gained large amounts of muscle. But, you know, for the general population, the natural population, 
As you progress throughout your training career, you need to be more strategic about the way you train and limiting the amount of muscle damage that you induce is probably in your best interest. Now, when it comes to programming, I recommend keeping exercises consistent for at least six weeks. Okay, this allows for the acute spike in uh, muscle damage okay, in the first couple of weeks of training, which may contribute to hypertrophy to some degree. But then it also allows for the repeated bout effect to kick in, okay, resulting in reduced amounts of damage. And this essentially allows you to apply very effective overload. Okay, remember, progressive overload means that training needs to be hard enough, it needs to get harder over time, and it needs to be within your adaptive potential. Okay, keeping exercises consistent is the probably the best way to apply a progressive overload that isn't going to induce high amounts of damage which may be detrimental to your goals. Okay, changing exercises on a weekly basis will mean that each week you get these high uh, spikes in muscle damage. So not only do you increase the amount of muscle damage you experience, but you also don't give yourself enough time to progressively overload your training effectively. And it's, as I said earlier, this is super important and why I recommend keeping exercises consistent for at least six weeks. So distributing your muscle group uh, volume throughout the week into two or three sessions is also something I recommend. This will allow you to limit the amount of muscle damage you experience and it will also allow you to accumulate more volume. Now, if we think about the SRA curve, so stimulus recovery and adaptation, um, a session like this with limited amounts of damage should allow you to apply another overload to those same muscle groups in a matter of days. Okay, so in two to three days after the initial session, you should be all good to go. And this approach is probably going to produce more hypertrophy than this approach here, where you absolutely smash the specific muscle group, uh, cause a lot of damage. That's going to leave you very sore after your session. It's going to increase the amount of fatigue you experience and you're probably not going to be able to apply another overload to that same muscle until next week. Okay, overall, this approach here, so limiting the amount of damage that you induce, is probably your best bet. Now, something else we need to take into account is that females may experience less muscle damage than males. Okay, this is partly due to the fact that cross-sectional area of the muscles um, in females are generally smaller than males, meaning they just don't get damaged, they don't get disrupted as much as uh, male muscle fibers do. And females also produce more estrogen. Okay, estrogen is a hormone that is protective of muscle damage to some degree. Okay, so it is not all that bad. Okay, again, estrogen, hormone that has fairly bad rap, tends to be associated with fat gain in specific areas, but it's also important, okay? It helps reduce muscle damage. So for females, high frequency training, high volume training is generally something I recommend. Now where this gets interesting is for advanced athletes, uh, muscle damage may become increasingly important as the training career progresses. And this is because as when you are advanced, you need to be stimulating your muscle fibers to a much greater degree than someone who is intermediate or a beginner. Okay, muscle damage also increases satellite cell proliferation. Satellite cells donate their nucleus to the muscle, um, which can also aid in the hypertrophic process. So just something to take into account. Obviously, more research needs to be done on this topic. Most of the training should still revolve around mechanical stress being uh, progressively overloaded, but distinct phases that aim in uh, inducing slightly more muscle damage may be beneficial. So guys, that's it for today. I'm going to leave you with three main takeaways. The first one being the fact that muscle damage does not have to be present for muscle growth to occur. Also, the more muscle damage you induce, the less myofibular protein synthesis uh, you are likely to see due to the fact that all the adaptive resources are going to be going towards the recovery of the damaged muscle. And for advanced athletes, disrupting our contractile homeostasis uh, to a greater degree than intermediates and beginners 
may be beneficial to maximize hypertrophy. Uh, intermediates and beginners should, however, be limiting uh, muscle damage and just focusing on progressively overloading their training. So that's it for today. As always, let me know if you have any questions. And besides that, I'll see you next week.